What's beautiful about civilization and the history of human beings and architecture is that it's, it's millennia, it's thousands of years, and we build thinking that, you know, our work at its best is satisfying 500 years in the future. Amazing ideas, great ideas, intellectual-wise, academic-wise, amazing skills. But where's the manufacturing part of it? The UK definitely needs to get back to manufacturing and through good design that will massively help. We're sitting on this um, bum freezing uh, uh, Thomas Heatherwick bench, which is a beautiful thing, but it's not going to save anyone's economy. Sewage systems and infrastructure and transport and all these issues. And these are being marginalised slightly by a focus on benches and chairs and, and uh, you know, jewellery. I have been writing to robot companies for the last five years, trying to find somebody who would, um, who would indulge me in, in my idea of trying to um, bring manufacturing to the customer. The new digital tools are making production accessible to anybody, right? So there's an immediacy about what you can, um, how quickly you can make things. So um, a ruler that I designed last week in, in, in London can be made in Milan and sold in Milan today. The, the evolution of digital technology with relation to design and how designers use that, how young designers are able to use that. In fact, how anyone's able to use that. You, know, you don't even need to be a designer to design things. You know, you can, you can spit things out on a three-dimensional printer. I mean, my five-year-old daughter could do it. You're asking me like, uh, what design is going to be in future. Well, <laughs> to be designers means to be always finding answers. I think the future, we, I hope we will find new ways uh, of quality with better consciousness and, and, and to be more responsible. If you look at the supply chain that it takes to create a t-shirt, for example, the processing that is involved in picking the cotton, processing the cotton, weaving it, bleaching it, you know, all of that is incredibly labour-intensive, toxic. The really exciting wearable tech future will come where we can build technology into living organisms. You could build or print a sensor onto that material so that it can read directly from your body. So then you have the combination of something like electronics with a biological material, something which could compost or biodegrade with just the addition of water. Whether it's a very, very small project or it's a city, as long as you've got the same kind of philosophy of trying to make the world a better place, then, um, then it doesn't matter what the scale is, you, as long as you introduce those um, kind of holistic ideas into, into the development. It's not necessarily the future that I had anticipated when I was 10 years old. You know, I really thought I'd be in space. You know, I had the opportunity to go to the moon. I think everyone did. For me, the future is simply not as optimistic as I thought it was going to be. You know, the, 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 the kind of sense of utopia certainly didn't kind of pan out. Which is sad in a way, you know, sad for my kids. And sad when I see my, my daughter um, operating an iPad. But she would never have known what it was like, you know, what it, what it took to get there. How on earth can we plan the future when the only information we're giving is from the past or today? I think human beings have an amazing ability through imagination. So, you know, people say to me, will cars fly? And I say, yes, it's just a matter of time. What man thinks ultimately becomes reality.